son of a bitch. Don, we want to say thank you for allowing us to broadcast here from the incredible Trump uh, Tower in Chicago. I've seen photos of you up on the rooftop here. This is the best hotel in Chicago, and I think the prettiest building in the entire city. Well, you know, I, I had a lot of fun building it. Uh, that was back before <laughs> you, you, you had to worry about getting shot in the streets of Chicago. Now it's a little different. That was the early 2000s, so it's a, it's a great building. I'm glad you're having a good time, Benny. It's amazing. Uh, you can see, you can look out at the river. You can look out at downtown here. It's, a, it's like the it's the best studio. The studios in downtown Manhattan have nothing on this. We're already coming up with excuses uh, to come back here and broadcast again from the Trump. It's just awesome. So thank you for building this building, Don. It's my pleasure. <laughs> so uh, when I used now, to build buildings, now I do this other crap. <laughs> it's, it, building buildings was easier. Uh, a lot less vicious. So uh, I want to start with the top line. I'm sure you've been tuning into the DNC. Uh, some uh, d y your name, the Trump name, has been said hundreds of times. We've been, we have a, a running ticker. It's been said over 250 times at the DNC by speakers. And the words inflation, economy, and jobs have been said less than 10 times. Uh, that really uh, says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, because they have nothing to run on on those issues. They created the inflation. They destroyed our job markets. They destroyed the economy. Uh, the, the, the regime's own press secretary said there's no light between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden on their policies. And you see that because they literally posted the Joe Biden second term plan uh, on their website when they first started talking about any kind of policy, which they hid from the American public and even the press for the last month. So, you know, the reality is this, Betty, we've seen the projection, uh, the abject insanity, whether it's, you know, Kamala's going to close down the border. She's going to fix inflation. Why didn't you do it now? I mean, I'd argue she's the most powerful vice president in modern American history simply because you have an absentee actual president, uh, not just because, uh, you know, he's you know, got dementia, but because he spent, you know, three quarters of his presidency or at least half his presidency on the beach in Delaware taking a vacation. So uh, she could have done any of these things. Why? Why wait till January 20th? You know what? If you didn't have the power to do it, then why not start now? Why not sit down with Joe Biden, convince him to do any of these things? And it's because they have no intention of doing it. Like everything else, whether it's uh, you know uh, student debt, whether it's uh, Title IX, they're trying to buy votes, knowing it'll get overturned later on when it doesn't really matter anymore. But they're buying uh, the American public's votes uh, with the American public's money uh, with no real ability to actually do anything about it. But it doesn't matter because the media is just functioning as their marketing department. I mean, I saw the thing that really shocked me, the thing that was amazing, when you realize just how out of touch they are, I saw a lady, I guess it was yesterday, at the DNC screaming, if Trump wins, he may actually weaponize the DOJ against his political opposition. He may literally have the FBI knocking on their doors. I'm like, I mean, like, I, I, I'm waiting, like, I feel like I'm the star of the Truman Show, Benny. I'm like, someone's <laughs> messing with me. Like, I am the only guy that's not in on the joke and I'm being filmed because, like, are you serious? Like, you did that. You sent the hostage rescue team, the FBI's HRT, like the Delta Force, the SEAL Team 6 of federal law enforcement to do like a search warrant at Mar-a-Lago with, with kill orders. Like, are you serious? We're going to weaponize these things? It, it, it's honestly, I don't know if they're, I, I, I don't think they even know. I legitimately think they're so blinded. Uh, they're so insane. They're so bought into the narrative. And this is where the media comes in as we've been watching who won't ask her any questions, who are happy letting her run sort of the, the Joe Biden 2020, you know, basement campaign. I, I think they really just don't know. So last night, Barack Obama uh, and his wife, Michelle, here in Chicago, uh, talked about the grievances of being poor and how tough life is. Did, did they do that for Martha's Vineyard? Did they call that in or was it, you know, was it live? I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> and we've, we've been spending the first half of the show talking about how uh, at, at the very least, there's like this level of authenticity to your father and yeah. to your entire family that says like, we built things, we did it in the private sector and my father's a billionaire. And yeah. that's, uh, that's okay. That's actually the American dream. And I remember when Barack Obama wrote his first book, he called your father the American dream, yeah. actually. And there's been quite a tone change, but you talk about how the press has been covering up for people. Nobody seems to ask them questions about Hawaii houses, 
yeah. about houses here in multi-million dollar houses in Chicago, yeah. multi-million dollar houses in California, multi-million dollar houses in Martha's Vineyard. They're still trotting out the same lines that, uh, you know, we're poor and we come from when we're, we're impoverished and we got to do something to fix it. Yeah, no, it was shocking. I saw that on Twitter this morning. I didn't watch the speech. I just, you know, there's only so much time. I figure I can get the clips. I don't have to, you know, put myself through. I got enough headaches for the next, you know, 80 something days uh, to have to do that to myself. But, you know, literally, like I saw the clips of Michelle Obama complaining about, you know, my mother said never to trust anyone that has more than their fair share. I'm like, you have <laughs> homes. Like, you have an $18 million home in Martha's Vineyard. Like, I'm the son of a billionaire. I don't got anywhere near that like, compared to, like, I'm like, I don't understand. Uh, it, you know, and again, they, they sell it like it's real. Like, it, it's it's lunacy. Look at the money they got for, you know, the podcast that no one watched. And look at the money they the, for the book tours and for the this, that, and the other. I mean, it, it doesn't jive with, with anything. It, it's just one big payoff scheme. But, you know, they can say it with a straight face. And their people are so brainwashed. Uh, they're such lemmings. They're such sheep in the Democrat Party. They're, you know, they're the same people still wearing masks. Because, you know, monkeypox is breaking out and that's going to be the, you know, the next thing. If it's not World War Three or nuclear holocaust, uh, you know, that's going to be the excuse to screw around with this election. But you know, they don't even see the irony in it anymore. It's it's spectacular. So we went to Barack Obama's old neighborhood yesterday and asked people. And we were expecting everyone to say something nice about Barack Obama. We went to the South Side. We went to the the sha- in, in, in the literal shadow of his presidential library. We... Uh, talked with people and the residents there and there's a south side and is i mean it's, <laughs> it's pretty rough actually uh, and there were a couple areas that we really didn't feel safe we popped out on a street corner and we asked people that i wonder just want to play you the first like 20 seconds of this and sure. get your response since you know chicago so well here we go yeah. for trump <laughs> I, don't, I go for donald trump me too i go for trump who are you voting for in 2024 trump, trump too <laughs> and why is that man he the best president ever. Yeah. Has Barack Obama done anything for around here? And these he never did anything since he's been in office. Yeah. And I'm glad he out. Trump the best. Barack Obama? Man, I ain't got no message to him. I don't mess with Barack Obama. Yeah. No, nah, I'm a Trump supporter. Trump do more for black people and care more about black people. And Barack Obama ain't black. Just to let that be known. All right. <laughs> what about Kamala Harris? I don't f- with her either. Yeah. All Trump. Trump all day. Yeah. What's your message to Donald Trump today? Keep going, keep going. Come get us, man. We waiting on you. I'm a Trump supporter, man. We gonna keep this going. Trump, he a real businessman. I'm a real Republican, man. I want Trump back in office, second term. On what would be your message to Barack Obama? On and on, on and on and on. Yeah. Dozens of people come up to us to say they want Trump back in Obama's old neighborhood. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me because, you know, Benny, unlike, you know, normal elections where you have politicians just promising something uh, with no real ability, intention or whatever to deliver, you know, Barack Obama was going to fix the economy. Remember, there's no magic wand for that. You, yeah, of course there's not. If you've never done anything in your life other than sort of just assume a higher office because they say, hey, he's got a, you know, a good line of crap and we'll, we'll, we'll just, you know, we like the look and we'll, we'll make him president. Uh, you know, Trump actually did those things. And so this time around, you're going up against the Biden-Harris administration. So you've had four years basically under them, and you had four years under Trump, even with COVID. When were you better off? When was it cheaper? I, mean, I don't do the, you know, Michelle Obama, like, I'm poor. Like, I'm the son of a billionaire from Manhattan. Like, but if I'm pissed off when I go to the grocery store, Benny, what does that say? If I have sticker shock, like, it's not going to affect my purchase. Like, I'm not pretending to be one of these holier-than-thou people. Like, you know, I can't afford McDonald's, but, like, I did. I took, I took Spencer uh, and Donnie to McDonald's. It was the last summer. And I, I remember because it just stuck into my head. We were coming back from a fishing trip, you know, just father, son. It was, Spencer was like, like 10 at the time. Donnie was 14. And it was $47. And I'm like, man, like, that's a lot. Like, it, for, you know, for me, it's not going to change what I'm doing. But I'm like, if I'm sitting there and be like, McDonald's is too expensive. That's insane. Uh, you know, hopefully people are waking up and maybe maybe that's it. Now, they have to install a Kamala Harris because part of their whole we're going to protect democracy is, is actually having people believe that it's not rigged, that they have a chance in voting in these things. So I guess that was part of the coup to throw Joe Biden out because no one would ever believe that Joe Biden could actually, you know, pull off, you know, what he definitely didn't pull off in 2020. But then at least with COVID and all the nonsense, they could sell it. Uh, you know, so they try to flip out that candidate. But that's why we just have to be all in, pedal to the metal, you know, next, you know, 80 days, whatever it is. 
uh, you know, just get everything in because what these people plan on doing to America is it's going to make it unrecognizable. Don, you said pedal the metal. There's been some uh, pretty remarkable news over the last 24 hours about RFK Jr. saying, yeah. yo, um, Trump's the way and we may drop out and join the Trump campaign, join forces. Can, can you please comment on that? Yeah, listen, I, I'd, I'd love to see it. Uh, you know, I know RFK, you know, I know some of that team. You know, don't don't agree on everything, but like, I, I think he'd actually be a great person to put in on certain agencies and just let him go to town, let him blow stuff up, like let him fix the stuff. I mean, he's incredibly well, well versed on a lot of things. And, you know, understandably like me and like my family probably has a gripe with some of the government and uh, could actually, you know, that's a style of motivation to actually get things done. But it also shows some unity that I'd love to see you know, on these tickets, you know, guys that may not agree on everything say, no, 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 we understand the common goal is to prevent communism, socialism from taking over our country. And that is the Kamala Harris, Tim Walsh ticket. I mean, there are literally, you know, it, it's a socialism. They, they want to put price controls in and they're going to stop your business and they're going to make sure that we take your kids away if you don't let them go through transgender surgery without parental consent. It's like these people are lunatics. And so if you see, you know, that kind of, you know, coming together, to fight a common enemy, which is, you know, a, a what I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, a, a, the biggest threat to democracy, I think RFK probably agrees, I think he said that, uh, then it was about Biden, but there is no light between Biden and Harris. That's according to their own press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, who said there's no light between the policies. So the policies have failed. They're taking us down a bad path. So I, I think it would be an incredible thing. I'd love to see it. So uh, RFK Jr. for CIA director, uh, you know, it'd be uh, assassination attempts are a great motivator, actually. And now yeah, now you and the Kennedy, the Trump family and the Kennedy family have have common cause with assassination attempts yes. uh, and the and, and the deep state. Hey, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm still a, a fairly pissed off son after what happened. But uh, honestly, you know, they, they have much more of a gripe than I do. At least, you know, my father survived. Uh, miraculously, frankly. I mean, that that was you know, divine intervention as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a shooter. I was nationally ranked as a shooter. Like, I, like that's like missing a two-inch putt. Like, you know, he, uh, you know, someone's watching out for him. So I think that was, uh, that was incredible. But it's also incredible that, you know, a month later, it's like it never happened. Uh, you know, it's being scrubbed from websites. They, you know, the people that took the picture won't release the picture. They won't let people actually use the picture because, you know, that may motivate people because, you know, God forbid you had a strong, powerful leader with resolve and guts and balls, you know, leading our country rather than the campaign of, of joy. We're not sure why it's joy because, you know, poverty, ridiculous inflation, not being able to afford homes because of interest rates. Like that doesn't scream joy to me. But, you know, that is that is the narrative put out by the DNC. Uh, their lackeys in the mainstream media are running with it. We It's a campaign of joy, Benny. We're, I don't know what's joyous about it. We haven't seen that. I've seen a lot of misery over the last few years, but but we're told joy and therefore it must be joyous. So I uh, just, just I, I, on a closing note here, R, RFK Jr. for CIA director. Come on. Yeah, that's, I, I like that. We I got Mike Walls right, we got Walls right here. We got Mike Walls right here. He's on FDA. intelligence committee. How about we, the we, FDA? How about HHS? Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> listen, there, there's a lot of places you could, uh, there's a lot of places that a, a guy like that, I think could do, uh, you know, great or, you know, sort of a general, you know, Overwatch. So, you know, I, I can think of a, a dozen roles I'd love to see him uh, in, and I, I think it'd be great. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that, is a, uh, that is a way to get the Joe Rogan vote, I got to tell you, man. Uh, yeah, but it's not about that. I mean, it, it's, it's reality. I mean, there, there, are th you know, there are things I probably wouldn't have him do, and there's other things that I, that I would, you know. So, uh, but I, I, I think it's important, and I think it, it, the biggest thing for me, frankly, is, is that unity. That people yeah. that don't agree on everything, and that's okay. We live in America. You're still actually allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that if you're a Democrat. If you don't go 100% along with them, you could be the biggest lefty in the world. If you disagree on one point, they'll cancel you so fast your head will spin. Uh, you know, our side, we're actually for that debate. We're willing to have those conversations. And I think, you know, that kind of, you know, unity, uh, you know, getting those guys together, I think that would show that to the American people. And I think they'd probably understand exactly what's at stake because those guys you know, with big egos, with a lot of power, if, if they can put all those things aside to fight for what's right for this country, I think that says everything we need to know. My man, fantastic. Well, the people of Southside Chicago stand uh, with the Trump family and say, love get it. us Trump back. <laughs> say, I love it. Bring Trump back, man. So uh, onward to election day, 70 days uh, away. Don, in closing, your message to the American voters. 
get everyone you know, get them registered, utilize early voting when you can, just register 100 of your friends. If you know friends in swing states, especially, make sure that happens. But it's not just about the presidency, Betty, to be clear. like I don't know that I want to win the presidency if we don't win the House, if we don't win the Senate. I've been there. I've done 50 hours of congressional testimony for treason, a crime punishable by death. That's like my average Tuesday Like I, at this point. like I, I don't need any more of that in my life. So you know, I want to win all these things down ticket. I want to win back school boards so we can stop the indoctrination of our children. I mean, I want to win state legislatures so you can actually set up proper you know, voting regulations in states where you have paper ballots, where you need ID. You know, I'm watching the stuff in Texas where they're putting illegals through the DMV, giving them a license. They're registering them to vote. Because, you know, as long as they didn't really know it was an illegal, you know, the weaklings will just allow them to vote. I mean, this stuff's going on all over the country. We need to bring back some sensibility. We need to bring back common sense and decency. And even the things that some of the radical countries of Europe are like, of course that makes sense. What are you talking about? Only in America uh, can you get away with this kind of nonsense. So everyone has to get involved. Everyone has to partake. Uh, you know, uh, rally it up. Because I, honestly, I think it's the last chance before you have a, a major uh, a major problem that you just can't come back from. We're excited for it. We got uh, we got Congressman Mike Walls here in the studio. Waltz, Waltz, Waltz with a T, yeah. right, no with a T here. for Trump. Waltz. That's right. <laughs> no Waltz. Let's be clear. Yeah, Waltz <laughs> in the studio. I actually have been to combat. I keep been to combat. I carried a weapon of war in war. Uh, a weapon yeah. of war in war. Yeah, right. Like uh, T for Trump in the in the Waltz and on the task force. Yeah, and on the task and force. on the task force. Yeah. Don, before you sign off, any uh, any lines of investigation for the man on the task force with subpoena power in Congress and a bunch of lawyers to figure out what happened with your father's assassination attempt? Listen, uh, yeah, well, we, we we speak a lot, so uh, you know he knows what to do, but we got to figure it out because listen, you know this is not one little error. When you look at the the compounding error upon error upon error, and then you know I think it's also a systematic problem. You had you know a week yep. later uh, a Secret Service person breaks. You know their post to go breastfeed. Like, you know, I think that's wonderful. But like, that's what maternity leave is for. That's that. Like, you don't do that when you're on guard at, at the Secret Service. I mean, we're we're turning into a clown show because of the woke but, bureaucrats at the top of the food chain. A lot, so many of the door kickers, as you know, Benny, you've seen me with them. These are lifelong friends from when I had a detail. Uh, you know, they're embarrassed about what's going on. But we have to figure this out because a, a, a sniper could have 20 minutes inside 130 yards with a high-powered rifle of the leading candidate of the opposition party, the nominee for the you know presidency of the United States at the time, someone leading in the polls, you know, that that could happen is not a coincidence. That there's dash cam footage of local law enforcement who does not do protective detail. They don't even know. And it was even obvious to them what was going on. And they're screaming at the Secret Service to fix this mess, what's going on. You know, and that to me, that's not conspiratorial. That's just a flagrant, it, it, it almost has no choice but to be on purpose because no one makes that many mistakes. There are not that many coincidences. I don't believe that statistical impossibilities happen. It just doesn't work that way. Hey, Don, I mean, the, the thing is, this isn't just an incident, you know, now in the past that we have to get to the bottom of. These threats are ongoing and they're happening right now. And the media just brushing right over that a Pakistani national yeah. was just arrested, made down payments on multiple hitmen, were recruiting spotters, were recruiting protesters for a distraction, a sophisticated Iranian plot. And then, you know, we just did a press conference here. Why do the Iranians want to kill your dad so bad? Yeah, like, Be by the way, I think it's like the greatest endorsement in political history. Like, right? if Iran, the world's leading state sponsor of terror, someone who subjects women and children to sexual slavery and you know, blowing up people all over the world, like, if they hate you, and they want to take you out. Isn't that the greatest endorsement ever? Like, you know, that it's a be, badge of honor, but they're currently trying be, to do even it. Even the Trump endorsement in this, in this case, I'm like, wow, it's, <laughs> it's good. But, but the fact that the American people don't realize that, like, of course, Iran wants a weakling like Kamala Harris in there so they can keep making and enriching uranium so that they can try to take out Israel so that they can profit off of the oil. It, it, it's, it's lunacy. And yet it's playing out every day. But you know, what, what you guys are seeing there at the DNC, what I get to see on TV, uh, although I'm actually at 100% in favor for the drive through vasectomy van uh, for all of the people in attendance <laughs> at the DNC, I think that would, that's actually a great start. I will I happily more. contribute in large sums of my own personal money to make sure that radical liberals get vasectomies. I, I, I'm fine with this. Uh, so, you know, sign me up. If, if they're willing to keep doing it, I, I will pay.
Yeah, I know. I've heard people criticizing him. Like, what's wrong with it? Yeah, Go for it. Yeah, like, the, pro <laughs> the problem that I found as we've been here for four days is that I don't think any of these guys have balls in the first place. Yeah, they, they, you know, that, that's fine. But let's just make sure that, they you know, miraculously they don't drop somehow in their mid-30s and they start procreating. That would be scary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it'll be a new it'll that'll be a new scientific study. It must be funded yes. by RFK when he's in charge of the FDA. Maybe exactly. I could see him FDA, CDC, CIA, yeah, FBI. Know, there's, a, there's a lot of places or like some sort of, again, oversight role over all of those sort of weeding out the corruption, weeding out the waste in there. Now, you know, I love the notion of Elon saying that he'd be willing to do that and come in there. Like, yes. you know, imagine like a technical mind like that, really just cutting through the bureaucracy and the waste. I mean, we'd literally, I'd, I'd say we'd save trillions of dollars. I mean, trillions of dollars. Yep. Um, you know, no one in D.C. wants that because they all profiteer off of that. They, they'd be most of them would be incapable of surviving in the private sector. They wouldn't be able to do that. But they're good at being bureaucrats. It's like Fauci. Fauci was never a great doctor. He was never the best at anything medical. He was he was a good bureaucrat. He was better at getting himself on camera. He was better at snaking someone who had a good idea, making it his own or or making sure if it was a good idea that went contrary to his thing, but it never got funding. Uh, he was a great bureaucrat. Terrible doctor. He hasn't been right in 35 years. Congressman, how furious would your colleagues be if Elon Musk had some oversight over congressional spending? No, it actually, um, there, there's actually precedent. Pri uh, Eisenhower brought folks in. I mean, there's uh, uh, Kennedy actually brought folks in from the business sector and said, start calling the fat. Uh, how about, I don't know, I'd like to put him in charge of auditing the Pentagon, which to this day, the Pentagon can't pass an audit. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of places to go. The uh, the Pentagon has a as a business and an innovation board, uh, making res making recommendations to the sec def. Send them right over to. Uh, and I think Don's right. We got to have all three. I mean, we've just got to have all three: House, Senate, uh, and and the White House. Uh, make those recommendations of exactly what he would do. Eight hundred billion dollar budget. And let's roll. I think AOC would be the angriest at all of this, and she drives a Tesla. <laughs> so it'd be it'd be interesting days in DC. Yeah. Come on, Don, let's bring it home, let's baby. Let's go. Let's do it. Hey, look. Uh, the, the, well, the, you know I know this, Don, but the Pentagon, we've got a clean house. Uh, we have got to start firing people uh, for the the recruiting crisis, the readiness crisis, the most expensive. Uh, weapon system in world history the joint strike fighter you know it's readiness full mission capable rate 29 percent for the military 29 percent for the joint strike fighter the yeah. most expensive weapon system ever in the history of the world 29 percent of work that's not classified yeah, i, I don't like to advertise that actually, it. i have a buddy that flies f-35s and the, the stories he tells me about the waste in those programs i mean he, you know he, he's just like man you you could literally have the Air Force ready, up, and capable for 25% of what they currently spend, and yet it, it's just all waste. And it, it just billions upon billions upon billions, and you have 35% readiness. It, it's, it's miraculous. And the people who are actually doing you know, the flying, the people who get it, the guys that are the highly trained people, you know, uh, it, it, they see it. And it, it would be so easily fixed if it were not for the, bureau the bureaucrats who, you know, they get their board seat at Raytheon or Lockheed Martin. Nobody's and say, oh, ever we'll fired. Go. We'll keep paying more for it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. Well, you know, just you know, give me my board seat in a year or two when I retire. That that that's my that's my retirement plan. No one is ever fired. There is no accountability, and you have a culture there. They're obsessed with making the handmade bespoke Ferrari. Sometimes you just need a fleet of pickup trucks. <laughs> that I don't know, a 19 year old mechanic can actually work on uh, and, and get ready to go. But you're over there. Hey, let's let's do it, Don. Uh, Don, I, I know I know you're over time. We de we deeply appreciate you on the program and uh, look forward to seeing you on the trail, man. Likewise, guys. Have a good one. Look forward to seeing you soon.